Hi, I'm Arm, and today I'm coming with the latest Japanese anime, The Little Lies We All Tell. The main character of the show can attract you, a boy named Tsuyoshi and his twin sister switch identities. He dresses in women's clothing and studies at the girls' school. Looking forward to a romantic meeting with a sexy senior girl. Do you think Tsuyoshi's secret is shocking? His best girlfriends also have big secrets hidden. The girl Chiyo is a ninja. She gets tired of the daily life of killing, hiding in school, and disguising herself as a good girl. Rika, who looks the smallest, is a general of an alien legion who was forced to land on Earth after a battle in which her ship was accidentally damaged, and she uses a high-tech device to tamper with the memories of the others. Disguising herself as a cute little lowly every day, the last girl, Sikine, is a psychic with the ability to read minds, and she has known the hidden identities of Rika and Chiyo, but Sikine has never understood why she can't read Tsuyoshi's mind. It's because because she doesn't know much about her superpower that only works on the same gender. Can the four junior high school students hide their secrets? Can Tsuyoshi, who is disguised as a girl, have an affair in a school full of girls and get rid of being single? Let us look forward to the hilarious campus life of the protagonist group. That day, Tsuyoshi notices that Rika always carries a doll with her and curiously inquires about the doll's origins. The doll is a tool for Rika to continuously tamper with the memories of the people around her. To avoid having her identity exposed, she has to lie that the doll was a gift from her grandfather on the anniversary of National Foundation Day. To the best of Sikine's knowledge, there is no such tradition to give away gifts on National Foundation Day and she fears that Rika's identity will be revealed because of this lie. Luckily, both Tsuyoshi and Chiyo are very kind and do not suspect Rika. Rika just hides her identity from the world and Chiyo almost exposes herself. She is attacked by other ninjas and gets blood on her face. When her friends notice this, she lies that it is a normal part of her menstruation, fooling both Tsuyoshi, who is a boy, and Rika, who lacks common sense on Earth. Sikine is shocked, and she doesn't know how can they be fooled by a lie that doesn't hold water. After returning to class, Sikine accidentally spills a water cup and wets Rika's doll. The doll malfunctions and it shouts out loud that an enemy alien soldier has appeared. Rika understands what it speaks and nervously pulls out a gun. She points it at everyone, asking them to raise their hands. Sikine learns through her superpower that her gun can dissolve all enemies. The uninformed Chiyo and Tsuyoshi think Rika is joking and don't pay much attention. Sikine hurriedly asks them to raise their hands with her. Rika asks a series of questions related to the Earth. For example, the density and age of the Earth, to find out if the enemy aliens are hiding in the mass of friends. But she doesn't know that generally, people don't think about these questions. Thankfully, Tsuyoshi is fond of studying astronomy and he gives the right answer, while Sikine passes the test with her superpowers. The last person to answer the question is Chiyo. Rika doesn't want to make it hard for lovely Chiyo and asks her the simplest question. What is the shape of the Earth? Chiyo's answer, lacking common sense, saying that the Earth is a triangle, which makes Rika regard Chiyo as an enemy alien and leaves Rika no choice but to shoot her. With Chiyo's superb ninja reflexes, she dodges the shot and knocks out Rika, but that move leaves Tsuyoshi and Sikine struck. It turns out that the gun only works on the aliens. Tsuyoshi and Sikine are not injured, but Rika's inexplicable shooting completely irritated Tsuyoshi. At this point, the doll is dried up by Sikine and no longer sounds the alarm. Rika realizes that the doll has just malfunctioned and hurriedly explains that she is just role-playing. She offers her military medal to apologize to Tsuyoshi. Tsuyoshi gets even pissed off, thinking that Rika is using the toy to brush him off. At the end, this farce is perfectly solved by Chiyo and Sikine's efforts, and Tsuyoshi is no longer angry. After that, Tsuyoshi gets himself into big trouble. The school is about to hold a summer festival and has prepared a set of summer dresses for all the girls, as well as underwear to prevent upskirt. Tsuyoshi doesn't want to go out in women's underwear and asks to switch back to her identity with her sister, Tsubasa. Tsubasa not only ignores Tsuyoshi's request but also takes a picture of him in women's clothing. Tsuyoshi arrives at school depressed and finds that his friends are also repulsed by the underwear which is a pain in the ass to wear. Only Chiyo is happy with the underwear and thinks it's cute. Chiyo likes cute things, and she made a bunch of accessories especially for this festival to see her friends wearing them. Chiyo first ties a hairband for Rika, wrapping the two bows on Rika's head in it. The two bows are Rika's tentacles and they are tightly tied by the hairband which makes Rika shiver out of her discomfort. But she can only keep smiling and compliment Chiyo's handiwork to hide her identity. Rika's praise cheers Chiyo up. She picks out a lace trim dress for Tsuyoshi and paints him with exquisite makeup. Tsuyoshi doesn't want to do this at all, but there is no reason to refuse, so he lets Chiyo change his look. Tsubasa gets excited at Tsuyoshi's new look and can't help taking photos of him when he's back home. It seems that Tsubasa is very happy with this experience of swapping identities. 
When the weekend comes, the four of them are out shopping when they meet a diviner. Chio is very interested in this and drags her friends to the divine with her. The diviner sees Tsuyoshi's future in her crystal ball and that he will marry a girl. But the diviner takes a look at Tsuyoshi's dress and mistakes him for a girl. She is worried that it would be offensive to expose Tsuyoshi's orientation in public. She has to politely state a different term that Tsuyoshi will marry someone he loves instead. When the diviner is divining Chio, her crystal ball shows that Chio is surrounded by the spirits of the dead, including many well-known noblemen. The diviner thinks Chio comes from a noble family and confesses that Chio has been blessed by her ancestors. What she does doesn't know is that those ghosts are people killed by the ninjas. And then, it is Rika's turn. The diviner sees a shocking scene in the crystal ball, where Rika is fighting with a group of aliens. This bizarre image instantly stuns the diviner. This time the divination also ends in a hurry. As the day of the festival approaches, each class begins to prepare shows for the festival. Chio thinks that opening a cafe will be popular among people, and she prepares several exquisite costumes for this purpose. Among them there are a handsome butler's outfit and a cute maid's outfit, each of which makes the other girls gasp in awe. Unfortunately, things turn out differently from Chio's vision. Tsuyoshi proposes opening a ninja house, a proposal that is approved by most people and quickly accepted. Chio has been wearing ninja costumes for many years, and she wants to wear other costumes as a receptionist at the festival. She offers many other suggestions, but they are all rejected. Everyone feels that Shinobiya is the coolest choice. The reason why Tsuyoshi suggests this is that he has always admired ninjas and wanted to wear a ninja costume to receive visitors. In addition, he has practiced throwing the shuriken since he was a child and that goes very well. He is excited to show his friends the skill he has. Shuriken is a necessary ninja skill. Chio can't help showing off herself and cuts the target in half easily. Tsuyoshi is stunned, but he gets competitive and he doesn't want her to show him. So he put out a message harshly that he will do a thousand push-ups at once today to exercise strength beyond Chiyo's. Tsuyoshi was just trying to show his bravado with exaggerated numbers, but he doesn't expect Chio to take it seriously and personally supervise him doing push-ups. It seems that as long as it is related to ninjas, Chio will take it seriously. After Tsuyoshi does more than a hundred push-ups and vomits, Chio not only has no intention to let him go but also arranges for Sikine and Rika to take turns sitting on his back to make it more challenging for him. Eventually, Tsuyoshi is unable to attend the festival due to overexertion, and Chio reluctantly takes his place as one of the receptionists at the ninja house. She performs a series of ninjutsu while greeting a foreign tourist. The tourist is completely blown away and henceforth assumes that all Japanese students know ninjutsu. After the festival, Chio calms herself down and thinks that she has been too harsh on Tsuyoshi. She comes to Tsuyoshi's house to apologize and brings various shuriken as gifts. Tsuyoshi doesn't blame Chio, but he is grateful that Chio has sent something he likes. At that moment, he notices something like blood stains on the shuriken and marvels at how realistic the props are made. Chio gives him an awkward smile. It seems these shurikens are not just toys. This is the recap for today. The four characters in this anime are so amusing. Rika does not understand the habits of the people of Earth, and Tsuyoshi knows nothing about the common sense of girls, and they often make jokes out of it which makes the audience laugh at the same time. In addition, there is a detail in this episode. When the diviner was divining for Tsuyoshi, she predicted the appearance of his bride. The hair color of the bride is the same as the hair color of Sikine. I wonder if this is a sign that their relationship will change after Sikine finds out that Tsuyoshi is a boy. Although the relationships among the main character group are still unknown, we can still take a guess. Who do you think is the last bride of Tsuyoshi? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments section. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I will continue to bring more of the latest anime recaps. See you next time.